So Ricky, on the six month anniversary of this oil disaster, talk about what we're not seeing in the media. What is happening in the Gulf? And the last time you were on my radio show, you said that when people ask you what they should do, especially people with children, you tell them to evacuate. Do you still offer that? Are you the, still offering that advice? The people who did evacuate were glad they did. Wow. And yesterday, I literally talked to two people. So six month anniversary, I spoke to two people in the Gulf yesterday, one who is sick enough to evacuate now. He is relocating for at least a year out of the Gulf and another woman with a grandson whose little two-year-old baby is so sick they actually took and did a blood solvent panel on him to see if the little guy has picked up too much oil. He just can't, he's on his third round of antibiotics, a little two-year-old child. I mean, this is, um, this is what we're left with in the Gulf. And I've given, you know, a number of talks now and people are just shocked um, that people could um, that public officials would allow people to come to a dangerous area or stay in a dangerous area. So invite tourists in, say it's safe, the water's fine, come swimming, here's our president going swimming. Great public relations for who? Um, the money, the money people, not the people who live there um, and are basically filtering all this oil that in the air, in the water. Um, they go swimming in the Gulf. I know a 16-year-old boy, perfectly healthy, an athlete. He went swimming in the Gulf in late August, and suddenly he's sick. Mm. Um, and it, it, the medical community in the Gulf is not trained in the specialty field of environmental medicine. So they're going the traditional route, the way they've been taught. Oh, maybe this is scabies, food poisoning, heat stroke. And unfortunately, I know of many, many people who are just simply not responding to multiple rounds of antibiotics, and they need they need help. They need the medical community to get educated on chemical illnesses, diagnosis, and treatment. Tell us a few more stories because we're not hearing these in the media. We're, we're definitely not. Um, I know of uh, three people who went to the beach. Uh, this is in late July. Um, actually, no, it was July 8th, uh, and this is Destin. This is right where the pet president was swimming. Um, the husband and wife and a friend, the two men went swimming offshore. They got covered in an orange goo, um, thought, yuck, came back ashore, all went to the hotel, took showers, went out for drinks. All three of them felt like they'd been slipped Mickeys. Mm -hmm. And these are three people who are really good friends. They've been drinking before. This is like when you take medicine, you're not supposed to take alcohol for exactly the same reason. Because the, um, the, the alcohol, or in this case, the, um, the hydrocarbons, um, dilate your blood vessels. And suddenly you have a great big dose of oil, uh, the alcohol. So, Sorry. The alcohol dilates your blood vessels and all of a sudden it releases all the oil that you've absorbed during the day or whatever it was. The toxic chemicals suddenly are all through your body. Mickey effect. People went home. Um, one of the, the husband who was, was married took a one week job in the Grand Isle, very toxic place, uh, Grand Isle unfortunately, um, and one week only came home in the middle of um, August, just before I published Bioremediation or Biohazard, he dropped his mother off at work, he dropped his child off at school, his wife turned around because she heard a strange noise, and he dropped over dead. Mm, dead? Dead. I am dealing with about three or four autopsies right now, and people um, wondering what exactly was the problem. I know of people who are down to 4.75% of their lung capacity mm. and have an enlarged heart um, to make up for the reduced lung capacity. I know of people whose dis esophaguses are dissolving and disintegrating. <sighs> now all these people, have, these people have oil in their bodies, mm. upper 95th percentile. So this is not one or two, this is enough People in the Gulf motivated, they took their own air quality samples, they took their own water quality samples. They know about the air inversion that sets up on the beaches at night and allows the pollutants to be trapped in the warm air and concentrated close by their homes at night where they're breathing to very dangerous levels. They, then those levels, as soon as the cold air layer um, warms up, those levels disperse. And so when was EPA doing their air quality sampling? Between 10 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. When 
there was nothing in the air. But at night, people are breathing dangerous levels. I think about four to five million people in the Gulf were exposed to either an acute or an intermediate level of oil at dangerous levels that is going to have incredible ramifications in public health. And I think this is the issue that will bring this back in the news by the one year anniversary and possibly even force a president out of office for lies um, in another two years. I mean, it is really that big. There are that many sick people. We're relying on documentary film crews, um, independent media now, and definitely the people in the Gulf to keep networking, keep these stories alive, and keep these stories coming out through God. What makes me so sad is I've been in touch with a number of citizen journalists down there who are documenting daily, taking photos and taking videos, and I've interviewed a few of them. These are men and women in their 50s and 60s who no longer have jobs and have no health insurance. So what happens to the people who are without health insurance? I mean, what, what's going to happen to them? A couple of things. One is a lot of people, because they, their jobs were trashed, they had to let go things like health insurance. And now, you know, they're sick. Mm. What can they do? Congress has passed a new law that I'm still trying, it's in the writing process right now, to allow people without health insurance to use their Medicaid to get treated for chemical illnesses. So this is a positive thing. Um, the other thing is that people who are really sick are t signing up with lawyers and the lawyers are paying for them to go out of region and access the appropriate medical care, um, occupational and environmental medicine doctors that are in Colorado, in Detroit, in other areas, in New York. And it's sad that the Gulf could be building this capacity for um, health care. I mean, it's a big petrochemical region. We have sacrificed the Gulf of Mexico. I was really embarrassed as an American to realize how much we have foisted off on the backs of our fellow Americans down there in terms of just chronic illnesses having to live with all this pollution. This is not acceptable. If it's not acceptable in California or, you know, Washington State, mm -hmm. it's not acceptable down in Louisiana and Alabama either. They can have these industries, but they don't need to have this chronic pollution with them. Um, so, And the oil's also reached the Pensacola Beach in Florida. The oil has far gone beyond Pensacola Beach in Florida. It's right. Um, it's coming down in the rain, the uh, oil and the dispersants. It's in people's swimming pools. It's in people's door stoops. Well, I mean, why, why would the government do this? These people are not stupid. They must know the health effects. I mean, look at Exxon Valdez. So many of the people who clean, cleaned up, I don't even like using that term, but people who worked during Exxon Valdez died. They knew what would happen. Why would they allow this to happen? It was, it's, it's still a giant, it's because these giant corporations control our politicians. And it's really no longer about Republicans or Democrats. It's about oil at all costs. And that's got but, to be unacceptable. But even knowing that there's so much documentation and that people could possibly die and there could be lawsuits, and as you said, these lies are now being exposed. We just got that government report that found the Obama administration suppressed scientists who wanted to warn the public. 21 years ago, the cover-up worked for the administration. Um, and what BP is doing is playing off Exxon's song sheet and assuming that because there's even more corporate control of our government officials now, you know, the industry can cover this up. And what it didn't count on was way too many people and these, these mm -hmm. chemicals coming ashore, the oil and dispersants. There's too many cameras, there's too many eyes, there's too many voices. I think this story is going to squeak out, maybe after the midterm election, but definitely before the next presidential one. So uh, the lies will out. I'm here with Ricky Ott. She's a marine toxicologist from Alaska who has spent five of the last six months in the Gulf and will continue our conversation in our next, in part three.